child of God, doubt that they are a child of God. Under apartheid var det de få, der undertrykte de mange. Det hvide styre kontrollerede alt, også økonomien, politiet, militæret. Sorte politiske ledere forsvandt eller blev som Nelson Mandela spærret inde i overvis. Op gennem 80'erne førte det til stadig voldsommere sammenstød mellem sorte og hvide sydafrikanere. Og det var i det kaos, at Cape Towns ærkebiskop Desmond Tutu Lederen af den kristne og overvejende Hvide Kirke blev en håbets stemme for de sorte. In 78 you became the um, the secretary general of the South African Council of Churches and you used this platform to criticize the white government's policies. Were you in fact not just a priest? but also a politician in those days. Oh, twaddle. I mean, that is absolute nonsense. I am, I am, I am the preacher of the gospel. And I, I used to say to them, now, what does the gospel say? They wanted us to preach pie in the sky when you die, to say to the people, don't worry, things are going to be all right. Who wants a post-mortem pie? I mean, we, we wanted our pie here. And our faith says, yes, you will get at least some of your pie here. Yeah. I, I don't want my pie in, in the sky. I, I, I won't need it. You were a tireless advocate of a non-violent struggle, but many, many black leaders disagreed with you, and they fought back in, in a violent way. Were they all wrong? My concern was that i believed that we had not exhausted uh, all non-violent options and that is why we called for sanctions and said to the west this is our last chance to bring about change non-violently i frederick willem de Klerk, do swear to be faithful to the republic of south africa In 1989, you became the new president of South Africa, and you announced that your government would end the system of apartheid. How did you arrive at that conclusion? It was a process. I did not have a Damascus Road experience where one evening I went to bed and still believed separate development is right, and the next morning I decided it's all wrong. We realized you cannot make something which is essentially not good better. You cannot improve it. You've got to make a paradigm shift. And we then started looking very hard at ourselves and started an internal process of saying we have to change fundamentally. We have to make a quantum leap. But we must in the same process prevent South Africa falling into chaos as has happened in so many other African states. This was after years of international uh, boycott that seriously harmed the economy of South Africa and the reputation of South Africa. What role did these outside factors play for you? Surely sanctions and the growing isolation kept us on our toes. It, 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 it made a great contribution towards realizing that we were out of step with the rest of the world. But did you realize that this was a process that would surely uh, result in your party losing power? I realized that it was a process which would result in the ANC becoming the majority party. I wish to put it plainly that the government has taken a firm decision to release Mr. Mandela unconditionally. Lederen af oppositionen, den afrikanske nationalkongress eller ANC, havde på det tidspunkt siddet i fængsel i 27 år. De fleste af årene på fængselsøen Robben Island. Nu 
Nelson Mandela forsvandt fra offentligheden som en vred ung oprører. Han kom tilbage som en fredens apostel. En mand, der med sit verdensberømte martyrium havde ændret mere, end han nogensinde havde kunne gøre med våben. On February the 11th of 1990, Nelson Mandela was set free after 27 years in prison. Yeah. What were your thoughts when uh, Mr. Mandela finally walked through the, the prison gates a free man? We were in the seventh heaven of delight. I mean, it, it was just unbelievable. I mean, that it's happened. This thing that we have been praying for, struggling for all these many, many years. Hey, it's happened. It's happened. Here he's, he's, he's walking out. He's walking out of the jail. He's walking and, and there he's lifting his, his fist and Winnie is walking by his side. He, and he's coming out. Hey, our freedom, our freedom is really happening. God has vindicated himself. God has has done what we told our people God would do. He has come down to deliver us. He has opened the prison doors and our leaders are marching out. Well, obviously, uh, it was my doing that he walked out of the prison gates on that particular date. It was the first big step which would create a platform from which we could negotiate a new constitutional dispensation offering hope and security and opportunity to all South Africans irrespective of their race or color. I also had apprehension. What would the result be? Would his release lead to a wave of emotional reaction which could become violent? There was that risk. Fire år senere, i 1994, skete det utænkelige. Den tidligere frihedskæmper og straffefange, Nelson Mandela, stillede op til det første frie valg i Sydafrikas historie og vandt en jordskredssejr. Hele verden så til, da han blev præsenteret for folket i Cape Town. Today we are entering a new era for our country and its people. Today we celebrate not the victory of a party but a victory for all the people of South Africa. It was just incredible. I mean you 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 looked at the sky and and it was blue. It was blue yesterday but today It was a new kind of blueness. You looked at people and they'd been beautiful, but today they had a new, new kind of glow. Uh, I mean, any, uh, you, look, you looked at the police who used to be our enemies and we said, hey, they now belong to us. They are on our side not as they'd been previously, almost always against us. It must have been quite an experience for you as well. You were on, the, on that same balcony that day. What were, what were your thoughts standing on that balcony? I had overwhelmingly a sense of achievement. I felt that a new South Africa was born, which offered hope to all its people, And I no longer had the feelings of apprehension, which I initially had, and the fears that things might get out of hand. You were not worried at all? I was not worried at all. Indsættelsen af Mandela markerede enden på et brutalt og forhat rasestyre. Men det indvarslede også begyndelsen til et opgør med fortiden. Et smertefuldt opgør ledet af ærkebiskop Desmond Tutu og med hvide og sorte i vidneskranken. Formlen var enkel. 
Hvis en person frivilligt fortalte om sine forbrydelser, kunne han få amnesti. Forbliv han.